where did all the Hadamards go? Why am I saying that? I'm saying that because I've been taking a look at the, look at the example circuits here. And I kind of, so the first one is Grover Search, which I did a while ago. And I just opened that. It's like, what is this? Um, if you remember, you can check out, check out the videos. If you remember well, Grover's algorithm, um, it was about applying an Oracle that basically flags the, sort of flags the item. Uh, so that's kind of your function that, that flags um, the item that you're searching or items that you're searching with the negative, um, with sort of a 180 degrees uh, phase. And then you can see in this, in, in, in these um, chance displays that this item, which is the one we're flagging, because um, if you take a look at the Oracle, what it's doing is pretty small, uh, but but you you can see that it's it's sort of a uh, you, you see there's like a uh, an empty dot in the third qubit. It's that's supposed to be a condition on zero, and then so so it flags that one one zero one one, which is what you kind of end up finding here. Um, but then in between, there's like the amplification thing, which is, uh, it's like, wait, wait a second, something's wrong in here. And, and I, what, I, what, I wanted, what I want to do is I try to break that down. Um, I kind of realized, let me just open, uh, you know, so this is, this is my list of things that I'm kind of working on next topics. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, but basically, the, there's, this, there's, this, um, there is this post from, uh, from Craig where, where I kind of, I think this is where, this is where exactly, this is, this is what I want to look for. Because I realized this is not, um, this is not your typical control. It's not this control. It's another control. It's this control. It's an, an x-axis control. And I find this really interesting and curious because I haven't seen this anywhere else. Maybe I'm just, I mean, I haven't read a lot, but I haven't seen this anywhere else, really. Uh, and so I was just curious. But this is where the Hadamards are. <laughs> so that's literally, um, that's literally a... It's a control on whether the qubit is in the state zero minus one so in 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 the minus uh in the minus state in the the, the this state bar minus state is that correct uh i mean i guess it depends on what's after that because here it says on minus off and this is on plus off okay but why is then why are we negating all that stuff then here? That's another. Mm. Because that is a so what if I put in uh, the amplitudes? What do I get in here? I still find the thing is it's impossible probably to put that in a straight line. It's one of the things that I liked about the quantum, the IBM Q, but and but on the other side, there's no other way to represent that. Um, it's kind of yeah. I wonder whether that would work, would work without these gates. Why doesn't everything have to be one? Hmm. What if I what if I get rid of this axis here, or I just make everything one? Oh, that doesn't work. Interesting. Let's try to figure this out. So that's what I want to do. I want to try to figure this out. See um, see that particular implementation of Grover search algorithm. Why why does it actually work? Um, the Oracle is clear. We're not, I'm not going to get into that. It's uh, it's basically a control Z on a specific set of controls. And remember that it doesn't matter really what the target bit is for the control Z. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, so it's just one one zero one one. So that's what we uh, could. So, but let's get let's get into this article. Maybe this is maybe this is going to clarify some of the things here. Uh, this one. Why cannot 
I can make it bigger than this a bit buggy, I think. Whatever. Control the pressure are a core part of quantum computation, not strictly necessary, since any two cubic gate tends to be sufficient for universal quantum computation, but certainly common. For example, the core of Grover's and Schroes algorithm are definitely are defined by control operations. Schroes algorithm uses control multiplication operations as part of estimating the peri period. And in the case of Grover's algorithm, there is a giant controlled, controlled, controlled Z right in the middle of every step. Yeah, that's that's, that's this here. Um, <clears throat> as a segue into the meat of this post, I want to point out something common to both these examples. Their controls are bracketed by Hadamard gates. The bracketing is blatant in Grover's algorithm, though you may not have noticed in the Schroes algorithm. That's true, because the Hadamards are part of the PFT. Hmm. Interesting. I'm, I'm, I wonder whether that's going to, I wonder, I wonder whether that's going to make the intuitive explanation of those algorithms somehow interesting or better. Because my, I think the one that I gave about Grover's algorithm of positive certainty and negative uncertainty, it's not bad. And it doesn't require any math to understand that. Um, but yeah, well, I, I think I know why there are all the X in here is for, is for the Oracle to work. For the flagging to work, I think. Um, so this pattern of control surrounded by H is common enough that it's worth packaging into one single logical thing. I call this an x-axis control. In this post, I'll be representing axis control. You see, that's really curious because this is really the first place where I see that, um, that construct, which definitely makes the circuit design easier. But I'm not, sure, I'm not so sure if it makes the understanding complicated or not. Um, the reason I call this h control h thing an axis control is that instead of condition operations in the control qubit being in the state 1, the axis controls Conditions of precision the control being in the state zero minus one, and that state is on the x-axis of the block sphere. Yeah, that makes. I mean, it makes sense. The way this is constructed makes sense. This makes. Yeah, this makes sense. <laughs> the Hadamard operation basically swaps the x and the z-axis. So bracketing a z-axis control with Hadamard turns into an x-axis control, and vice versa. Um, also, the axis control is associated with the x gate in the same way that a normal control is associated with the z gate. Interesting. Now you may think, hold on, don't we already use a circle plus to represent X gates? Why are we using the same symbol again? Isn't that confusing? That's a fair complaint, but actually makes a lot of sense to use the same symbol for, for both because X axis controls are often interchangeable with X gates. If you have an X gate controlled by an X axis control, you can swap them without changing the applied operation. You see, that is actually really cool because, because let me just clear all that. We'll just we'll just um, we'll just get that back again later, because I remember I was so confused. For me, it was confused. It's like okay, so why why is it now? I understand why is it these you know why is it these not the same uh, like like these right? It's it's definitely. It's definitely not the same. I mean, this is the this is the result you got, like one one. But if you put it this way, then you're getting one zero, right? Because it you can't just like this is not equal to the roughly. But if you have a controlled, if you have a controlled Z, right? You've got uh, just to give you an example, uh, this is like that. So this is a so this is a one one with face minus 180. And this is one one with face 180. And if you maybe I should maybe it's easier if I uh, so what if I do one 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 can I Easily compare that like that. No, I can't compare that like that. No, no, no. Just forget about this. Anyway, um, so this is definitely interchangeable. So if I do it this way, 
whatever, right? You you get that. If if you flip it, you get the same. You get absolutely the same. So, and and now now that I read that, it's like it's kind of funny because it means that these control knots, these controlled operations can be basically like swap as long as the control is on the on the right axis. That's interesting. Swapping the CX knot gate, uh, yeah. If you have an X control gate, that's really cool. That's really interesting because I didn't know the fact diagram, but because I didn't know the fact diagram to both when I added X to draw the quirk, I picked the wrong symbol for them. Um, since the matching, since the matching state has a minus in it, I figured using a circle minus was most natural and a plus for the inverse control, but the interchangeability with not is much more important. So the next version of Quirk will switch conventions and I may go back and fix it in older posts. Taking this switch operation and control concept we find another control not is equivalent to a Z control not is equivalent to a Z controlled by X. I hope you're starting to get the sense that operation controls are. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they are awfully, because th that was a really big mis mystery for me always when talking about the control set. It's like, why why does this, this behave, behave differently? I hope you're starting like behave differently than the control X because the control, the, the control actually has to do with an axis. I mean, if you're saying, and that's kind of misleading because you're like, yeah, the control is like an if, right? I mean. Yeah, and yeah, yes and not. I mean, it's apply the controlled operation if the controlled qubit is one. Um, <clears throat> that's a way to talk about it, but it indeed means whether the controlled qubit is one on your measurement axis, right? In this case, is the Z axis. Um, as long as they have the same, in fact, that's correct. In the same way that every rotation has an axis, every single qubit operation has a corresponding control. Hmm. That's an interesting way of saying it. We can freely change which qubit is the target of an operation without actually changing that operation as long as we keep the axis consistent. Ah. Huh. That's interesting. Hmm. So. Doesn't matter which wire is the target. Yeah, but here you're using a combination of Z and X controls. That's confusing. The equivalence between operations and controls even works for partial rotations. Isn't it that they should? Uh, On minus E off, on minus on plus off. Okay. I would go so far as to say that the fact that we distinguish between pressure and control, at least in the case of diagram above, is just a historical accident, a vestigial spandrel inherited from classical computing. In the context of quantum computing, it often doesn't make sense to call out any of the wires the target of an operation diagram diagrammatically taking a hint from a common notation for control Z. We drop the whole target thing and just use a bunch of linked knots. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Wait a second, but I think I might, I think I might. No, exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like it's a control X, it's controlled by the X axis. And the normal, the, the, the normal. <clears throat> this thing here is a control on the on the z-axis exactly. Ah, it just takes a little bit. Oh, getting used to it, but I think it kind of makes sense. Uh, 
I just don't know why here you've got those dots. I assume that I assume that that uh, okay. So ah, this being okay, I get it. So this is being you can really combine them all. Like what it's just saying is that you can exchange the control you can actually change the control by the operation. And because those are black dots, those are Z controls, controls on the Z axis. So you can just replace them for a Z operation. Okay. And those here down are, um, so those those here are on the X axis and those here are on the Z axis. That's why you can replace them by Zs or by the, the, the X gates, okay. Um, <clears throat> let me just, restart that because it seems like it's not work oh no, it's working okay um okay okay and the same here same happens now i get it okay mm -hmm. no target notation yeah i like that i like that because it's confusing can i use the no target notation here so what if i just do uh this no, I cannot. Uh, I cannot. But it would be cool. It would be cool, actually. Um, but you, you should be able if he, if if he's actually doing it here. Why is it not working? Can I? No, it's not working. It's not working for me. Okay. Clear all. Um, let's move forward. So for partial rotations, we can use an outside indicator to show how much to phase. Okay. Oh, well, that's... <clears throat> okay. It's kind of interesting that it works even for those. Yeah, because I mean that's not standard notation, I guess. I mean, it's definitely not in here. Basically, we're basically we're doing the the block diagram is describing operations in terms of the eigen and the vector they affect instead of thinking in terms of specific qubit being turned conditionally. We're thinking in terms of a of a direction in Hilbert space being negated or phased. We're thinking in terms of the whole system instead of in terms of of its parts. Exactly, and I like that because it's. It's the, the, this constant thing that I have in my mind was like the phase is a relative phase, right? So it doesn't make any sense that you're picking what's your target qubit because it, the phase affects your whole your whole state. Okay. Uh, this perspective of controlled operations as direct <clears throat> specifications of out of phase Hilbert space is of course a very useful tool for intuition when thinking about quantum circuits. For example, the controls the controls only approach makes rubber algorithm simpler in two ways. First, it pushes you to think in terms of the overlap between the solution vector and the diffusion vector, which leads to the elegant rotating towards solution interpretation uh, of what Kerber's algorithm is doing. Second, it makes the circuit a whole lot more compact. I used to have issues with understanding that because for me it just it made sense mathematically or dramatically but it didn't i I've, I've, there was a big gap between this reading reading the circuit and understanding that and, and let's see if that makes sense so it pushes us to think in terms of the overlap between the solution vector and the diffusion vector which leads to the elegant rotating towards solution interpretation of what Grover's algorithm is doing second it makes the circuit a whole lot more compact so with all the praise of just thinking controls done, uh, let's backtrack and go over some reasons calling out individual wires as the target is also useful. Um, first, whatever the mix classical computation, whatever we mix, whenever we mix classical computation into our quantum computation, it doesn't make a lot of sense to consider the classical bit as anything except the control. You can say if this bit is on, then hit that qubit with the next gate, but it's really weird to say to the extent that this qubit is 
and the on plus off state hit that classical beat with with the Z gate. Exactly. I was going to say now because <clears throat> how do you even read that like this? I mean, but it's really weird to say. Yeah. The later description makes it sound like you need to measure a qubit and that would break the equivalence. Uh, second, when you have several partially overlapping operations to apply, marking several wires as a target can be a compact way to represent the set of operations. Uh, compact repetition. Third, we might be controlling larger multi-qubit operations where the intuitive gains aren't as good. Not that there is a way to generalize the operation as control concept to large operations. Basically, if alpha is an eigenvector of A that gets phased by X degrees and beta is an eigenvector of B that gets phased by Y degrees, then the combined operation control A, B should phase this times this by the product product of angles approach matches the behavior of controls in three respects. If A doesn't affect alpha as plus by one, then C won't affect this one. Negates alpha minus six. <laughs> Mathematically, we can define the effect of control by using logarithms. Always remember to try logarithms. <laughs> Why? <laughs> but I digress since I haven't found a thing for which the above idea adds clarity. Um, the core point here is that when doing quantum computation, it's intuitively useful to see operations and controls as basically interchangeable. Every operation defines a control and every control defines an operation. There's no inherent reason to stick with the conventions of classical computing. That's a really interesting perspective where these concepts are un unambiguously distinct. For example, from the view of single qubit operations as control, it's trivial to define what classical computation is. Classical computation is what you get if you can combine z-axis control with exactly one x-axis control. The axis control is not in the C, 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 not. And in quantum computation, it's more powerful than classical computation because quantum computation can apply multiple x-axis controls. Challenge based on the fact that the Toffoli plus Hadamard is universal for quantum computation proof that support uh, support for at most two x axis was sufficient, not no partial rotations. No, 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 that's too okay. Let's just like stick to this. My goal was to um, kind of try to intuitively understand Grover's algorithm with this new perspective with this new rotation. So I'm basically uh, refresh and load Grover search. The, the idea here is that, uh, the idea here is that you're, you should understand those things as a uh, shift on, on the axis, that particular axis, right? Or uh, uh, I cannot get rid of this being negated. Okay. Instead of thinking in terms of a specific qubit being turned conditionally, we're thinking in terms of a direction in Hilbert space being negated or phased. Exactly. Negated or phased. Phased is, yeah, kind of, because it's the common way you talk about that when you talk about the x-axis. And that's exactly what's happening here, right? The x-axis. So intuitively, I mean, the oracle is phasing your solution. But here is like, because I wanted to know 
when this oracle is really amplitudes. Hmm. I can't. Yeah, yeah, sure. But so here the amplitude. I mean, we see this here. Yeah, let me. But I'm, I'm. It's, it's kind of, kind of a problem trying to reason it this way. Because uh, the oracle is supposed to kind of. The oracle is supposed to. Uh, The oracle is supposed to basically face the solution that I'm looking for in, in that superposition. So here you have got a superposition and and that's what that's what the oracle is supposed to do. Right? Here What it, what's confusing me here is that it's uh, there's many other things that are there's many other solutions that are that are faced, and that particularly is not faced. It's like it's zero faced. <laughs> Why is this? Just close that sign because it's just blinking. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. I don't know why this is blinking so much. Maybe I should just um, zoom out a little bit. Yeah, that's definitely better. Um, that's definitely better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Try to understand why. Because what what is happening here? So here is this one, and here one, one. Things are being phased in here. There's some states that are being phased, so I don't understand how the oracle so in theory this oracle is doing like is doing that so let's see if i can replace this oracle by exactly what it's supposed to do so this is these 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 sorry and a z correct correct and we get rid of this they're still working, yeah. Mm -hmm. So intuitively speaking, this oracle should face should face our solution. So if I put another uh, amplitude display afterwards and I compare that with this one, what do I see? Uh, is this is it possible that yeah okay okay so that definitely changes that's our solution that changes and everything else stays the same yeah oh, okay ah, okay so there is okay and so and now And now what we're saying here is we want to negate on the x-axis, okay? 
So that phase is our solution. And I think it's 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 key that we've got like all the X's in here and then the whole map in here. Mm. Because it creates exactly that superposition where where there's if you pay attention, each solution has each state like has a different phase. So it's kind of alter an alternating phase. Interesting. It's kind of an alternating phase. But in but in the IBM Q experience, in the IBM Q experience, how was that? How was that set up there? Um, because that's the one I did. So if I go to the to the documentation, introduction to quantum algorithms, and I go to the blue, 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 Grover's algorithm. Because uh, that's not Grover's algorithm. That's a QFT. Grover's algorithm. Exactly. Well, because this is a so here is kind of different, right? Because it starts with with the Hadamards, just like with the state qubits in state zero. And then, and that's the, that's the, exactly, and that's the, like, that's the, the amplification part. Interesting. Interesting. So, but anyway, so, so what's happening here in this, the way this is designed is that and that's definitely creating an imbalance, which I think that then this is what, you know, because now we've got the, the, uh, but so this is minus 0 0.117 and this is plus, yeah, so it basically negated the phase. It negated it, so it, it changed the phase to 180 degrees. That's that's for sure. And here, here we're now back at having all the phases in an alternate, like alternating, right? 180, 0, 180, 0, 180, 0, 180, 0, uh, sorry, uh, 0, 180. Oh, they're not always alternating. Sorry, it's not that they're always alternating, I see. There's this, there's this, but there's this pattern where these are opposite, these are opposite, these are opposite, and these are opposite, these are opposite, these are opposite. So there's this pattern. Um, and here we're breaking this pattern. And so when we make a, it's how to read that, how to read that. So you're reading that as negating the X axis. That's what, that's, that's the way Craig puts it, right? Um, here so it's like the hill space being negated or phased instead of thinking in terms of a specific qubit being turned conditionally we're thinking in terms of a direction in Hilbert space being negated uh, So that's the x axis being negated. It's still, it's this, it's, it's still 
tricky to think about it. Mm. At an intuitive level, because here you've already got uh, that. Because when when the Hadamards are in there, at least my my brain still thinks about interfering interference, right? So like you're creating certainty and destroying uncertainty, um, and because you flipped and because you have flipped the face. Um, those things don't balance anymore. So that kind of was my original, my original intuitive explanation to this. Um, in this case, you have to think about, you have to think about this being a negation, like an, a negation on the x-axis. Okay, a negation on the x-axis. Why did I put block spheres all over the place? on the x-axis. So because all the qubits separately, they are here. Yeah. Hmm. Whereas here, also. Yeah, they're all in minus. This side, there is indeed a change. On that particular qubit, that's the one that has a control on like a wheel. So, it's kind of negating, so it's negating the x-axis, negating on the z, in the direction of the z-axis, but it's in the direction of on minus off, kind of, huh? it's negating in, in that direction. Uh. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Trying to think of the effect. Does the, why does this affect the amplitude? In this case, yeah, because that definitely affects it. Because you've got it here. So, okay, I think I'll leave it. I think for the video, I'll leave it here. But but I I think that's. That's a really interesting perspective. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely, I'm gonna have to figure that out. Don't, don't worry. Uh, I'll just make another video on that. Don't wanna, don't wanna. Because then the pattern is the same, right? So then the oracle comes in, and then, uh, and then if you do it again, if I put another display here, then we see that what the only thing the or the only thing the oracle is doing is, is flipping the amplitude. It's negating the amplitude of our solution state you know? no matter which is here it just negates it and exactly hmm. what does it mean what does it mean intuitively that we're negating because intuitively negating the face i get it right it negates the face i mean i have that visual representation here but what what does it mean to negate to neg negate or face negate the x axis? Uh, 
So there's this mean that indicates this n axis. Because actually, the effect, the effect that this has is it's kind of negating all the stuff. They are all opposite. But then suddenly this one keeps the phase being 180. So that's the difference. It keeps the phase being 180. Why does it keep the phase being 180? Why does it keep the phase being 180? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because effectively, and then at the qubit level, it seems like those go a little bit just go a little bit low and, and then this cube goes a little bit up. Okay, gotta think a little bit more about it. Um, just give it a thought. But it's, uh, that's also what this tool allows you. It's like, that's pretty cool. Uh, good, 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 good. Um, it's a brain stretch, but I think it's a nice exercise because it's definitely a different way to see that. And, and maybe it's a, it's a Craig says it's a very, it's a very useful tool for intuition when thinking about quantum circuits. And that's definitely, that's definitely something that I'm going after because the Haramarts in there always make the, the reasoning about circuits quite complicated, um, quite unintuitive, but let's see. I mean, maybe, I, maybe that won't work for me. I don't know intuitively, but it kind of makes sense. I, at least I had in my head always the problems like why are we using like uh, why are we making a difference between the target and the control qubits when in in those cases it just doesn't make any difference. Um, cool. Uh, let me save that uh, so I can just you know go ahead. So I'll just call this uh, new growth new new grover and I'll. Delete this and bookmarks, whatever. 